журналистам не очень... За хвилину починаємо зараз. Колеги, ми продовжуємо робочий день у прес-центрі Українського кризового медіа-центру і продовжуємо підбивати. So we continue to discuss uh, what were the results of 2016 and what will be the next year, 2017. I would like to give the floor to Alexei Kian, political scientist, head of the initiative, only focal center Donbass, and he will introduce our speakers. And thank you for coming to Christ, uh, UCMC, to our podium discussion. As one of our guests has mentioned, it's time before the New Year holidays. It's time to sum up the year that's passing. We decided to do it now. We invited the best Ukrainian experts to our podium discussion. Uh, we are uh, to discuss the results of the year 2016, key trends and challenges for 2017. First of all, I would like to give the floor to the representatives of science and sociology. I believe that uh, no analytical uh, um, information is possible without uh, data. The first one will be Mr. Volodymyr Paniota, General Director of Kyiv International Institute of Sociology. I will uh, be talking from here to see what I am trying to show. First of all, I would like to say that if we take the perception and public opinion on the situation in the country, that's the catastrophe. Eighty-six percent of population say that the leadership of the country leads Ukraine in the wrong direction. Economic uh, situation of Ukraine, good one percent, bad almost 87 uh, percent. The trust to president, 14 percent trust, uh, about 70 do not trust. Uh, Five percent trust Verkhovna Rada and 82 mistrust Verkhovna Rada. Talking about the trust, uh, it uh, dropped down at the ratings uh, uh, that uh, uh, is reflected uh, less. But because the trust, the confidence uh, deteriorated, the ratings have not changed much. And though the authorities have lost a lot and the opposition, but Kivshina, first of all, opposition bloc, and Rabinovich, uh, they criticize our institute because we said that uh, his party, the party of Rabinovich, uh, doesn't have chances to get to the parliament. If we look at other indicators that we have been monitoring since 1992 and 94, and that is the uh, level of poverty, we, that is semi-subjective uh, assessment. We ask, what do you uh, not have money for? And. Um, that is correlated with the World Bank uh, indicators from 14 to 15. The level of poverty went up twice, and from uh, 15 uh, in 2015, 2016, this hasn't changed. Uh, basically, if we compare 
In the first quarter of 2016, the, indicate, the figures are the same. Now the self-assessment of health, it hasn't changed. About 40% believe that their health is good or very good and 20 bad or very bad. The surveys of uh, doctors show that the subjective uh, self-assessment of health is well correlated with the realistic uh, situation in the health sector. As to dynamics of happiness in Ukraine, the level of happiness went down from uh, uh, 16, 14 to 57 and 15 and 54 percent in 16. But the surveys of our economists who took our massive, our data show that that is uh, because of that part where there are the military actions. The level of corruption. This is a big survey. There were four waves. The first, the blue is uh, 2015, the yellow is 2011. Perception of corruption went up. People believe that the corruption uh, uh, has increased, but realistically, from the experience, this allows us to uh, identify the level of corruption. It went down. Talking about voluntary corruption, uh, extortion, and uh, personal collection connections. Internet, number of Internet users in the recent years is going up. Now 62% uh, of the population are Internet connected. And resume, summing up, in the last year the level of uh, Poverty got stabilized, the level of health hasn't changed, the level of happiness hasn't changed for the whole territory. Percentage of Internet users goes up, the level of corruption is going down. In general, the situation has stabilized. Unfortunately, we have not managed to analyze two more indices of individual well-being and public well-being. Both of them have uh, grown up. They went down from 14 to 15, and they went up from 2015 to 2016. And the individual well-being is much higher than public. People believe that um, the situation is bad for everyone, but is good for them. The resume is uh, quite optimistic. It's not as bad as it seems. And it seems to us so because uh, mass media started working differently. There's more freedom. There are uh, many negative news, uh, fewer positive news. Then there's an information war and the political fighting, which leads to the fact that negative situation is uh, presented uh, more often than positive information. Pan Voldemar, uh, uh, <laughs> one more slide. <laughs> Thank you for your detailed analysis and data. The director of sociological group rating, Alexey Antipovich. Thank you. I would like to add to what Vladimir said, some figures we made public recently. Vladimir didn't mention them. We monitored the issue of successes and failures of Ukraine concerning population, the main success in 2016, 
two topics. First, Jamala victory and Paralympic Games. The team of Ukraine and its success. Other events that are successful. Initiative of the government to increase the level of minimum salary, introduction of e declarations for uh, officials, also uh, Olympic Games, uh, release of uh, Savchenka procu state procurement through Prezoro system, and uh, several other topics. I won't mention all because we have this information on our site. But unfortunately, the main topics that are painful for the population, the situation with prices, exchange rate, tariffs, fighting corruption, investigation of Maidan cases, um, also situation in Donbass. These are key topics that are failures in 2016. At the same time, we ask Ukrainians about successes and failures in the policy of central government in 2016 in several areas. We took this question, taking into account the dynamics of 2015. We asked the assessment for 2015, and we asked also the question in December, and the relative success the work of government concerning defense, uh, reform of law enforcement sphere and decentralization, and uh, partly visa-free regime, partly because decentralization, this is 22% of success, and the visa-free regime, 18%. And defense area 40%, and the reform of police 28. So these are relatively successful areas. Ukrainian power was successful in, and the uh, failures, the list is big. 80 or 90% are negative. And on the whole, as Vladimir said, I agree. It looks like catastrophe, but there are some positive trends, and l let's speak about it, because in dynamics, during the year, there was catastrophe and the uh, same uh, views. For example, activity of central government concerning defense of the state, success rate 6% higher, Decentralization, 10% in a year. Social protection of the population. So catastrophe on the whole, that still it grew from 5 to 9%. We can laugh over these rates, but the assessment of Ukrainians, it uh, raised. So, um, and you remember about the minimal salary, 3,200 that will be. Of course, there are some negative uh, uh, that you've mentioned, visa free regime. The assessment uh, is uh, twice less. In assessment of the actions of the government, and 32% of people said that the, the government was successful. And now only 17% believe that the government is successful in this. Reform of police in 2015, we had 42 positive, and uh, uh, now we have 29. So it's about a force in reduction because people get disillusioned, and police officers are not so ideal as we believed at first and uh, at the same time. Uh, support of uh, small and medium-sized business, uh, it grew, and uh, fighting corruption from five to eight, and uh, so on. Judiciary reform, uh, health care reform, also restriction of uh, f uh, influence of oligarchs, uh, and also uh, the same uh, the situation and the um, sphere of communal tariffs and economic development, and. Uh, in some topics, we have good results that we hope remain next year. And uh, if we say that uh, 
treason, Maidan and everything is lost. But if we look at it closer and uh, subdivide, then we may see that in some areas we have success and we see that people see this and uh, the main is to speak about it. So you can ask me. I won't continue. Okay. Thank you. Can we say that many of these data are related to a low comparison basis? The expectations of people last year influenced their opinion more, and this year it's uh, just like inertia. You're not right because the no, the dynamic of the last year doesn't influence. Ukrainians got disappointed a uh, long time ago in the situation in the country. And uh, uh, from the beginning of uh, uh, the independence, the positive uh, assessment of the country takes place before the elections. After every Maidan, but after that, the uh, indicators go down. And the fact that we have 70% uh, of uh, negative assessments, so that is uh, the situation. The Ukrainians are like that. We are never happy with what's happening around. But as Vladimir says, uh, um, that is what we talk about. Uh, um, about, but inside uh, us, Ukrainians uh, get uh, adapted to all that. I would like to give the floor to Sergei Detsko. The question? I wanted to ask sociologists, uh, is there a chance to compare today's situation with the situation of 2013 before Maidan, and if, uh, as you say, there's a bad uh, um, attitude uh, um, to authorities, is there some sociological parameter uh, which allows to measure that? Uh, is there any parameter in sociology which uh, allows us to say, are we on the eve of Maidan or not? Because otherwise, the um, value of sociological data goes down. I will ask you, will there be my done tomorrow? Will you go to my done tomorrow? It's an expert assessment. But if you ask the population, they don't know. For my done, we need uh, uh, some explosion. And whatever people are talking about, about some protests that the people uh, say that they are tired or anything, to say that this will lead to Maidan, that's nonsense. Not in 2014, nor in 2013. Uh, the sociologists uh, cannot um, foresee, because what is an explosion? And how did Maidan take place? Just uh, analyze the news. Uh, of 2013. That's not a sociological measurement. I demonstrate it like that. That's what's happening inside the head. I believe that uh, such things could have been forecast if we had uh, some mathematical models. I used to have the Department of Computer Modeling of Social Processes, where we started to uh, make such a model. And together with uh, Amosov, then Amosov died, and uh, nothing is happening. Without the model, we are asking very abstract question, whether will you will go out, if your rights are violated, will you go out? Before that, Maidan, there was no threat like that. There was more or less normal situation, and all these assessments were lower than in 24. But the main reason 
was uh, um, beating the students. Uh, if we would ask, will you go out if the students are beaten, maybe we would get the correct uh, uh, result, but we cannot foresee what the authorities may do. Uh, in some, uh, I was making a survey, and there were two questions. One related to legitimacy of the subjects that represent the interests, and 42% of the population did not want to deal with any party of Ukraine. There are very few legitimate uh, mechanisms that would uh, uh, resolve the conflict. Then there was a provocative uh, question, what to do with the... Uh, uh, senior civil servants who are corruptionists, uh, and uh, they, they, we had all types of answers, persecution from persecution to shooting them at the uh, square. 32 percent in the country were for shooting on the one hand, uh, the radicalism is going on up, but on the other hand, the legal mechanisms go down. In any case, uh, we can say that um, the social political immune deficit of U the state of Ukraine is going up. From the very beginning, it has been mentioned that the representatives of science will be the first ones there are representatives of science, and there are, there's no science. I will refer to the theory, the structural theory of uh, revolution, who say revolution starts uh, with two conditions. First, fiscal situation in the country. Today, everything's fine with the fiscal situation in the country. And uh, the split or no split in elites, when there's a split in elites, then the count elite starts organizing people to go to the meeting to Maidan. And the individual misatisfaction is formed into mass misatisfaction. The sociologists are fixing not the subject but the respondent. We need to differentiate between the sociological and politological level. So back to political results of 2016. Talking about names, who's the winner of this year? Poroshenko, the president, Groisman, who has become the prime minister, and Timoshenko, because she has a rating positive dynamic. If first two winners are winners because of the concentration of power, but talking about the support of uh, uh, people, that is Batkivshina. There's opposition blo block, Murayev Rabinovich were active, but look at 2016, Samapomich, Sadovi, they are downed. The rating of Sadovi has become the waste. The waste rating in business, it's pre-default, uh, but uh, waste, uh, well, because of waste, he, he was downed. Other political forces, uh, People's Front was at a low level of rating, it's like that, but they lost the political position. To lose the prime minister is a serious loss. Talking about Poroshenko block, no achievements here, but as to the winners, what happened in 2016? Finally, parliamentary uh, presidential republic has become presidentially parliamentary or presidential. Uh, the uh, power uh, got consolidated in the hands of the president. We realized if he wants to survive, he will have to do it. His, the prime minister is his, the parliament is practically majority is his. 
270 votes for the budget. Uh, then general prosecutor, they removed Shokin and we've got the new general prosecutor. Like in the movie Return of the Hero, the last scoundrel says, who are you? He says, I'm the law. Our uh, prosecutor cannot say I'm the law. He can say I'm a PR person, I'm a politician, I'm the law. Anti-corruption bodies, which were very active in the beginning, they supported the support of our Western partners. But uh, they are not uh, uh, the main body. General Prosecution Office, uh, that's the instrument of elites. Uh, uh, all these anti-corruption bodies were formed uh, with the assistance of diplomatic moral support of the U.S. and embassies, but now they were said that they, they had to be somewhere here. They wanted to receive the permit uh, to listen to. Uh, they do not even ask for that. They understand that uh, Clinton has lost. Uh, that's probably not the worst option for our authorities, but maybe not the worst, because otherwise we would be uh, have uh, the continuation of taking care of uh, the U.S. taking care of us. Parliamentary Presidential Republic is the Euro in uh, Constitution, but de facto it's presidential. It happens uh, in France like that when the president has control over the parliament. If he has the strong uh, opposition regime, then the president wouldn't have some such uh, leverages to influence the authorities. These are important things uh, which uh, took place in 2016. As to other things, um, presidential team is quite successfully, successfully manipulating all opposition forces. Uh, uh, all opposition forces could have surrounded uh, uh, all that fragile coalition structure, which doesn't have 220 votes, but opposition bloc should be called opportunistic bloc because they're involved in classical opportunism. They expect, like a Chinese dragon is sitting on the hill looking at the valley, looking at how the tigers are fighting there. Then they will go down and get there victim free of charge. That's the strategy of opposition bloc. If they wanted the early elections, they would uh, take different strategy. They would move the situation in this direction. But as we know, opposition bloc is not too much opposition. They're happy with this situation. They expect that it will be worse in the country. The authorities will not cope with economic problems, and then they will go to the valley and will take that tiger, who's a paper tiger, in fact. That's opportunistic block. Summer Pomich, after Sadawi was downed, uh, is now on the periphery of m attention of mass media. I don't see any drive in them. I don't see any new leadership qualities there. Leshko is playing his game. And that's the game, to get to the second tour of presidential elections with Poroshenko. Because now the uh, game starts, who will be in the second tour. One thing is when it is uh, uh, Poroshenko Boyka, others uh, Poroshenko Leshko, but now different thing is if it is Poroshenko Timoshenko. Yeah. Uh, so the main thing is not to allow opposition to be united, to do what uh, Leonid Kuchma was doing well. When all this kind of four 
opposition three or five would be deleted uh, to the level of one uh, uh, player like it was in 1999 when Pyotr Simonenko from the leftist party was in the second tour. Who is supporting this opposition drive? Who will be working as the only opposition as the only opposition, there's opportunistic opposition, but there's a opposition opposition. This is Yulia Timoshenko and Batkivshina. There's no way out, other way out for them. And this trend will continue in 2017. What are the challenges? The authorities don't have any political uh, uh, rivals talking about uh, their potential. All these moods, uh, which were measured by sociologists, it's because of the media content. The media picture is uh, different. All opposition shows uh, have become um, not militant. All the channels, they have become more loyal to authorities. Where's Mikhail Tsakashvili? He's somewhere. He cannot. He 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 has to be active. He has to be a position. Uh, he should be in, on TV, but that means that the authorities have taken the control over the mass media. He understands uh, what is uh, the national police, whether it's good or bad. That's what they say on TV. What they say on TV is what any respondent will tell you. And I agree with uh, Paul Bourdieu, who said that there's no public opinion. The public opinion is fabricated. Today it's in newspaper, today you are on TV, tomorrow you are in the brains of the respondent. The main challenges for 2017, foreign challenge, foreign political challenge. If the situation is not so good for us, then we will have then our Western partners will uh, um, sort of allow the early elections, then there will be no People's Front, maybe Savchenko, Saakashvili. It's in the first half of 2017, the work that was not done in 2016 is not completed. If the uh, problem of war and peace in Donbass is uh, not resolved, this is frozen. But it's still the key issue for Ukraine. And on that, internal political combinations will depend. And second challenge for the government and for the whole country is economy rise. So there were a lot of announcements at the end of the year. Budget, minimal salary, 3% of economic growth, private bank issues. But these are the announcements, the declarations, but not real steps. It can happen so, like in private bank case, the burden is on the budget, and uh, these problems of 2016, they will continue in 2017, and they should be resolved there. So this is the key year, because uh, 2016, this is the year of transition, and everyone was waiting for the results of the elections in the U.S. Now we have results, and uh, 2017 starts and there is American thriller, blockbuster maybe. Welcome to hell, it is called. And uh, 
it can happen so that it can be the slogan of 2017 welcome to hell but this year i believe will be really difficult maybe some figures thank you vadim public opinion is non-existent i agree with this but not only tv form the opinion of people there are always people who have their opinion and uh, their opinion about what is successful and what is not and uh, they form their electoral choice based on this and uh, there is so confusion who grows and who falls and I will tell you about information that we gathered during 12 months. Yulia Timoshenko, I won't ma mention parties because it uh, duplicate presidential uh, trends and parties are, they all have leadership. That's why um, first Timoshenko, uh, 2015, 2016, uh, 13, to uh, 17 percent uh, of support and uh, uh, this uh, Petro Poroshenko the same period 22 to 14 this is fall Yuri Boyka 11 to 10 this is small fluctuation no dynamics here like Lishko 8 to 9 percent no dynamics we cannot say about growth and this the way 11 to 8 percent so this is full Anatoly Gretzenko from six to eight we may say about some trend to growth but this is slow and Vadim Rabinovich from uh, September we have information uh, seven eight percent and his body at the level of six percent Vadim Rabinovich in 2014 had three percent of uh, vote votes so this person has its rating for a long time and click from six to five Yarosh three three Savchenka in uh, June we put uh, her in the list of the candidates got ten percent then two percent and the senior it's it's is absent in our rating so this is our data so uh, now I would like to give the floor to a uh, Gardarka expert uh, Sergei Datsuk and uh, he will tell us about the results of 2016 so we are at different sides so first I would like to say that my colleague is absolutely right because if after uh, the revolution there was a uh, uh, unification of people and there was great potential and uh, um, in all those years <laughs> Перша каналізація відбулася, коли знехтували добробатами і волонтерами. Більше того, не просто знехтували їх. First, they marginalized volunteers and isolated them. So this was the biggest stroke. Then, second, community was not involved in illustration and fighting corruption this is the second blow and uh, existing institutions dealt with it and uh, they created the uh, national anti-corruption bureau uh, and uh, this was the second uh, blow and the third one is when they started manipulation with public opinion they destroyed they destroyed the uh, uh, so every, everything is formed through populism uh, and uh, now we have anti-populism campaign and anti 
protest campaign and uh, they were delivered through the media and uh, as public opinion became inactive and now uh, there is social depression and uh, I want to say that these trends will be the most influential next year with one clarification that we can revive public activity through some uh, structural changes. For example, protest against tariffs, protest against um, bad economic situation. I would like to tell you about one more thing that I understood just right now. Uh, when I was coming here to Ukraine uh, Crisis Media Center and uh, Mr. Panyola said that happiness uh, didn't change if we take out those people who uh, are in the EGO area. At the start of war in 2014, we had the homogeneous situation concerning um, attitude towards war. Then there was strict differentiation. Uh, on the background, uh, there was uh, the uh, Minsk agreement, and now there is a split. There are people who participated in the ATO, and they uh, see the situation directly. There are people who live there or who have relatives there. And uh, um, on the way here, I know that uh, I, um, I saw um, Unity of Donbass uh, a slogan, a unity of Donbass, not unity of Ukraine. That's why we are speaking not about differentiation of community, but the split of public opinion. And uh, there is part of community that uh, deals with war and the majority of community that doesn't deal with war. And uh, this is the most dangerous split in society because we have war and uh, society it is split part of society smaller part maybe seven maybe ten million people who uh, deal with war and the majority of society that do not have any relation to war and they only see some, inf uh, and uh, they uh, um, just have some information about uh, killed and wounded, and uh, everything stop uh, stops here. So maybe this is dangerous because this is one more direction of consolidation and uh, activization of society. First, economic, and second, a situation w with war. If uh, uh, the society is consolidated uh, concerning war and peace, we will have some unity and activity of society will rise. If no, we will have apathy throughout uh, 2017 and uh, there can be even third aspect. And Karasev told us about foreign policy. I will add to this. Uh, very important in 2017 will be whether some fragmentation processes start in Russia. In Russia, there is great symbolism, 1917. Uh, so if uh, uh, there are some fragmentation processes in Russia, it will influence greatly uh, on Ukraine and it will reinforce civil society in Ukraine. So three directions where I see revival of so social energy of society, despite those trends what you Karasev told us about. So that what oh, I wanted to say about 2017. Thank you, Sergei. The next one to speak is uh, Mr. Nebozhenko. What are the trends of 2017? What is your attitude towards this year? I thought that philosophy will be higher than uh, uh, sociologists and uh, uh, hopefully we don't have uh, psychologists here. 
so this year was the year of success of the president Poroshenko and the year of loss for Ukraine. The main is that the president was able to be on top of uh, the all the branches of power and uh, there is a politicization of uh, a prosecutor general office and PR of uh, if we want to hear a new uh, story or to see new faces uh, we look at Lutsenka and it is easier for us because we know that we are not so bad. And uh, um, I believe uh, I value the president, but power for the benefit of power means only one thing, that power do not have good communication with the society. And uh, in order to survive, there should be mobilization that without mobilization, it is impossible to implement reforms and to win at the front line, and our enemy understands it. Those who are in Moscow or their proxies here, they understand us. Speaking about the Supreme House on 2016, we had legitimate Supreme Council. We visit them, and uh, we see new costumes, uh, and uh, new wonderful things that is going on there. But in the legitimate Supreme Council, there is illegal majority. And this is a rare thing even in um, other states. So the Supreme Council consists, in my done, they said about three head dragon, and uh, now we have four head dragon. Up, uh, this is the majority. Um, this is had uh, that is pro Moscow opposition bloc, pro Ukrainian politicians, but Kivshin and Somapomich. And there are those good guys who understand that uh, in times of crisis you should not do business but to just uh, um, have status not even views if polit uh, so uh, sociologists just deal with their research but uh, Anishinka s said that these are 75 people those the happiest people in Ukraine they uh, do not afraid of their future and uh, this is really bad this is a rare species of parliamentarism that uh, this parliament uh, is doomed in 2017 and 20, uh, uh, 1918 and the president lacks the strategy uh, he said the first day uh, after he said that he has 22 pages of his plan and uh, Yushinka also had 22 pages and uh, uh, only Kuchma was fair when he was saying that he doesn't have strategy for a country at all. We see that there is no uh, control and no mobilization in the country and uh, some such elegant person who knows a lot of foreign languages, our president, that he is uh, uh, it it looks like we uh, it's uh, so our um uh, we have many problems in our foreign policy uh, and uh, uh, many issues uh, we should resolve uh, so sociologists try to balance <coughs> things but at the same time geopolitical factors are really grave and uh, um, the world we cannot s so there is no concept that would describe where everything goes and uh, there is world crisis and uh, small and big countries they try to shift their problems to other countries to lessen the burden and we are now the place uh, where all the waste goes 
all the risks that are in Europe and Russian Federation and the United States, maybe even in the Middle East. So I would like to end my speech now. And now the floor is given to Konstantin Matvienko, writer and journalist. In your opinion, 2016, is it positive or negative if we are speaking about uh, the overall situation? So it's difficult to say whether it was success and with this, uh, that success. I understood many things in the course of our discussion. What is really important for me? And uh, this is the new feeling for me. At the level of individual impression, and it is not so bad for individuals than at the level of the country and uh, uh, the opinions of the expert community. So uh, I don't have grounds to disbelieve on the information of uh, sociologists. The statistics of prices, of inflation, of tariffs and subsidies, it uh, shows that uh, the economy of households is reduced at the same, the same time there is uh, some adaptation. Uh, this is my assumption. There is some sort of adaptation of the society to the situation of the families. The families, they adapted to the situation. They just don't want the situation to be worse. And uh, uh, so, so uh, society, it tries to preserve the situation, I believe. Uh, that is what I see in society. But there is some positive trend. And uh, this is also new in the situation that we should take into account. And what happened in 2016, a reversible trend that cannot be changed. Uh, the breakup between the power and the uh, society, the gap. the gap between them, uh, the power and society, they started to live separately. And uh, what is going on now, when the prime minister tells us about great success, and he said about 1.5% uh, of growth, but statistics shows 3%. So inflation and uh, rate. Uh, but uh, if economy grows, why Grivna falls so rapidly? So maybe it is done artificially. The society is inactive, and uh, we didn't have proper reaction on e-declarations. So it, uh, so th people who were in the office, they declared millions. And the question is where this money came from. And the National Anti-Corruption Bureau does not provide us uh, with information where did these people get this money. And um, also there was. Um, meeting uh, headed by Vikeshkina, and the president was mentioned as the person of the year, and we confirmed that he reserved uh, the power, maximum responsibilities, uh, the government, uh, prosecutor's general office, uh, and the uh, parliament. And now, what is the threat? He became not only the bearer of the power, but he is also responsible. Uh, and he did it with his own hands. He didn't distribute the responsibility. And uh, the evil <laughs> and now we've heard that the level of mistrust to the institutions um, is very high. It's higher than 90 percent. But again, the society, 
find some positive things in the activity of authorities and is not ready to systemically ask the question about replacement of authorities. The president is now personally responsible for all branches of authorities and similar mirror process is taking place in opposition. The opposition has personified as well. There's opportunistic opposition and opposition opposition. And the circumstances uh, made uh, someone the leader of the opposition and it's not just about trust or mistrust it's about the content which Batkivshina tries to interpret і на відмову суспільства підтримати ті чи інші ініціативи Батьківщини. Ну, передусім, ми всі розуміємо, що субсидії, вони заморожують економіку, вони зупиняють економіку. We all understand that subsidies froze the, or freeze the economy. чи фізичним особам, але субсидії попри це в суспільстві сприймають. But the subsidies are perceived by the society positively. The opposition is in the situation when it has to explain to the society why different actions of authorities are dangerous. мірою монополізував цей простір. Рік 17-й. У мене знов... Є 2017-й. Я маю суб'єктив відчуття, що цей рік це рік великого в комунальному господарі. обладнання, і це все разом дуже негативно вплине на соціальні настрої. Та ж сама злочинність, ті самі епідемічні пороги, які у нас перевищені за цілим рядом захворювань, тобто реально суспільство зараз опинилося на межі, як я сказав, храпове колосо провернулося, розрив між суспільством і владою вже не є таким, що може бути подолений, і різниця потенціалів в цьому розриві, як на мене, створює є перед умови до соціальних катаклізмів. Тут згадувалося, що для цього потрібні щонайменше дві умови. Це фіскальна ситуація і ситуація з розколом еліт. От те, що зараз відбулося з бюджетом 2017 року, як на мене, достаменно створює фіскальну загрозу, коли збированість податків, коли робота платіжної системи опиниться, ми це знову-таки бачимо по курсу гривні не в останню чергу, по кількості обвалених банків, робота фіскальної системи опиниться під питанням. Ось такі от, да, ну, оптимізм полягатиме, може, тільки в тому, що позиція консолідується і пред'явить план Покрок, покроковий план виходу з, того, з тої ситуації, в якій ми перебуваємо. Дякую. I missed one thing. Something that led to the fact that the president has become the winner of 2016. He removed two dangerous groups from elite. Або націоналізація, пробачте, приват. Nationalization of private means that the empire, business empire, 
of Kalamoyski fell. He won as the owner because he will not pay the debts, but he lost as the oligarch. He's on the hook with all his political media assets. Watch one plus one, you will see everything there. Before that, Firtash fell, before that, Industrial uh, Union of Donbass, Zhivaga. There are no oligarchs who influence the state policy. Only Akhmetov is left, but he's not influencing. He's still needed to have contact with Donbass. He's an important figure for Donbass. And for the situation around Donbass, the peace as continuation of war by other means. And the second, from civil society, the group of young Euro optimists is neutralized. These politicians, they burnt out. There were big expectations from them. There was a lot of manipulation. Their biggest corruptionists uh, in the country, but they demonstrated that they want to live like uh, their elder comrades in political class. So they neutralized some young uh, uh, civil activists were boiled up in this uh, kettle of establishments, others who wanted to get to the parliament. They thought that now everything's possible for them. They are stars now, they are heroes, superheroes, and political Batman, and they were shown no. So there are no threats from this side. There's no threat of a new political uh, generation that's bad because it's uh, the strike uh, at the future counter-elite. The elite is still post-Soviet, but the European one hasn't grown up. And there's only one threat uh, for authorities, economics. If uh, the uh, situation deteriorates, then the opposition, is, uh, the opposition will have to get united. But if the situation is like it is now in the economy, the Ukrainians get adapted well, and we have black soil, potato, pig, uh, pickled uh, cucumbers, we can survive. But the problem is there were two Maidans and European dream is the dream not to survive, but to live. Uh, I will also say a couple of words, because I'm a political scientist. I agree to, with Mr. Karasov. I believe that there's a concentration of authorities, a concentration in oligarchic field, and that leads to concentration of responsibility, and that's a scary situation because, in fact, we see how uh, the president has taken responsibility for everything that's happening with the lack of modeling of the future. The situation could be quite uh, dangerous. I would add to what Mr. Detsuk said. Вы казали про волонтерів і добровольців. Я додам ще. The authorities managed how to manipulate the, uh, the population. Using subsidies, 2016 was the year of manipulations. And uh, I agree with Mr. Matvienko that the authorities uh, 
are now even further away from the population and telemediocracy starts when people start to be dependent on TV and then the authorities are dependent on TV. And this is what's happening in Ukraine. We now have new men from Mr. Nibazhenko. Illegal majority. There's no document about coalition, so they are illegal. Also, I will mention some trends. In 2016, we had the deactualization of Euro integration. 2017, Euro integration will return to instruments. Though no effective policy of uh, integration, I agree with Mr. Karasov, much depends on the fact that we don't have uh, an effective policy of Euro integration. Oh. So this is the virus that can be overcome, and in 2017 we can see some trends to um, concentration of power, and uh, this can become catastrophic. And also infrastructure and transformation. We saw discretization of some reforms that positive, some positive changes. They just drowned. Uh, in the institutional and capability, and the 2016 uh, didn't give us the instruments, the infrastructure for the developments, uh, transformation of uh, these factors. And uh, 2017 should provide such instruments, and they are now. Uh, are forming, uh, they are formed now, and um, uh, you know that in the East we may see some trends, some immunity of the state. And um, we didn't say about one more trend. This is the emotional uh, burnout. The War transforms Ukrainians, and state institutions are not ready to respond on this. We change. We start to see the statistics of victims, and we see it as a norm, and it changes values of Ukrainians and changes their priorities. And the situation will continue in 2017. And I hope that public initiatives will contribute to overcome such problems because one of the main tasks uh, in fighting with the enemy to not uh, transform into this enemy, not to become like our enemy. So in 2017, we will continue our discussions on these issues. If you have questions, our experts are ready to answer. So, Christina Bevis, TV. I would like to know your opinion about the issue about snap elections, when they will be next year, and uh, taking into account the rating of political forces, what can be the parliament of next convocation, and who can head the government in such a situation? 
I mentioned the figures, and now politologists will tell us about it. You know, I believe that we shouldn't be afraid of these early elections. This is the form of uh, criticism of power. If people don't like their power, they should replace, they should change it. So uh, if uh, the problem is that during this year, the idea of early elections, it is not prevailing and uh, this idea does not prevail. Maybe 40 percent, not 60, not 55. The problem is I'm not proponent of the idea that some conflicts in society will result in early elections because uh, uh, the power is uh, uh, split from the society and uh, uh, this illegal majority, it uh, prevails. It can be Ukrainian politicians, some mafia, so they have uh, uh, the conflict in the elites can lead to early elections. And um, if I was a president, I would have early elections of the president, not of the Supreme Council. If he did it with the Supreme Council, it will be difficult for him to fight uh, this uh, new Virhovna Rada. And this is not a threat. This is what can happen in uh, 2017, so from December uh, uh, till the oct October next year. So, answering your question, we have official data. There were elections in uh, 183 united communities, and uh, we have uh, results. More than one third of the deputies. Uh, that were nominated by Batkivshina, uh, heads of local um, councils are also nominated by Batkivshina, so the trend is seen here. And um, concerning other political forces, opposition, uh, there is parliamentary opposition, and uh, that opposition that is outside parliament, and here, we can see those political forces who are in politics for a long time and that are not represented in this parliament. And there is some banal thing. If uh, law on elections continue, then all Brezenkos and other others like him will be in the Supreme Council again. And the uh, early election request was in 2016, in the first part of the year, and uh, it is behind us now. And uh, if power feels good and the president has all the power, why do they need early elections then? If the parliament is under control, if the budget process is easy for power, and then there is no sense in early elections, and uh, the power and co coalition partners, they do not have any need in this early elections. So they don't need it. There won't be a, a people's front. There won't be um, a Poroshenko block. They won't increase uh, the num number of votes. So they are not in a hurry. And there are some trends for early elections. This is uh, low trust to Virhovna Rada, uh, low, and uh, there is such a problem. Second, the situation in the economy. So uh, there can be a black swan in 2017, and then the only choice will be early parliamentary elections in order to preserve some stability. And then the question arises, uh, what will be this new Supreme Council? When they say that nothing will change, it is not true. Even nothing changes. People's Front, they, we won't have them, but there will be other political forces with better representation. 
What can it be? But if China will increase their presence, block of Petro Poroshenko maybe will decrease its presence, but maybe there will be new political forces from the East, Nash Krai, our land, for example, or other political forces. And what can happen? And uh, the power won't like it. New political forces can get united into coalition, and they uh, can nominate their own prime minister. And it will be political, not technical, uh, premier. And it will be parliamentary. Um, the president uh, submit uh, nominee, but still the political regime will transform and will become parliamentary and presidential. And uh, in this situation. Will it be easier for the president to win a second term? And one more thing, one of the conclusions of 2016 is that uh, uh, the mid of uh, the term of the president and uh, he decided to go for a second term and uh, this will be for him a good situation if uh, uh, the situation will be like at the end of 2016 in order to be re-elected in 2019. First, there are some circumstances that we traditionally ignore. I would like to contradict uh, the crisis in the elites exists and it is chronic. Second, from the moment when we understand that elections start, the political structure will change and there will be political forces no one paid attention to. And uh, whether there will be existing political forces. People's Front started its campaign to return to politics this week. Whether they will be able to return to the threshold and overcome the threshold, this is the question. And maybe we will, they will succeed. And uh, the last one, from the moment, from the start of the new election campaign, the rules will change. So there will be consensus on impeachment law and the change of CC and new uh, election law. And this will be other rules that will impose new metrics on the whole electoral process. So this is my ideas on this. Do you have questions? The last question? No questions. Thank you. And I would like to say provocative thing. If 2016 was the year of Poroshenko, 2017 can be the year of Ms. Tymoshenko. And this is my conclusion. The old system in the crisis 2016 shows that the system is in chronic stress and we look with optimism uh, to 2017 and we wish you all the best and we believe that 2017 will be much better than this year. Thank you.